Welcome to St. Simon's Parish on the second Sunday in Lent. Today's Gospel recalls the story of the Transfiguration when Jesus revealed himself in all his heavenly glory to Peter, James and John. May we also encounter Jesus and listen to him in this celebration of Eucharist. Please stand to welcome Father Kevin as we sing our opening hymn. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to you all as we come together for our Mass today. It's the second Sunday in Lent, and we welcome both, of course, just a few of us gathered here in the church, but quite a number of people looking online at different times of the day, maybe on Saturday night, maybe on Sunday, maybe during the week as well. And it's been certainly encouraging to see the number of people who access this Mass online. And we hope that brings people a sense of comfort and connection with the Lord. And of course, along with our online congregation, of course, our long-term and loyal radio congregation, I met someone just this week who's been listening to this Mass for many years on 89.9 The Light. So for all of you who are connected that way, again, the technology might be different, but the faith is the same, and the sense of belonging is hopefully something that we all value as we come together in prayer. Second Sunday of Lent, so we're drawing a little bit more deeply into the season of Lent, a time to be able to maybe see where we're heading and how we're using this very useful and important season of connecting with the Lord and maybe addressing those aspects of our life which need an extra jolt, maybe, or review. Let's just pause for a moment at the beginning of our Mass and we'll ask God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you reveal yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, draw us into the light of your presence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased to nourish us inwardly by your word. With our spiritual sight made pure, may we rejoice to behold your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, Abraham obeyed God and prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. The first reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moira. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me, your son, your only son. Then, looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted even when I said I am sorely afflicted. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. I will I'm... walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. In the second reading, God's faithfulness is shown in his offering of his own son for our salvation. The second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, 
we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the shining cloud the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There in their presence... He was transfigured. His clothes became dazzlingly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here, so let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came, covering them with shadow. And there came a voice from the cloud, saying, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And then suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they came down the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warning faithfully, though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead might mean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Friday, the 28th of November, 1986, I went out to lunch with the Pope. Now, there were one or two others along for the ride, probably about 20, I guess. It was the day of the Pope's Mass at Flemington Racecourse, his papal visit in 1986. And it was quite a memorable experience. It was like, you know, if you've seen the royal dinners or the presidential dinners where there's this great long table and people there left and right. There weren't any candles on the table or whatever. But I was there with one other priest Father Jeff Barron, who was in charge of the liturgy for the papal visit. (laughs) And anyhow, the Pope was there, and he was in the middle on one side. And, you know, normally you go out to a a big show like that, and everybody's yap-yap-yapping to everybody. Well, guess what? No one was yap-yap-yapping for anybody. Everybody was waiting to see, what's the Pope going to say? (laughs) Poor Pope... Imagine every time you go out for a meal, nobody says anything, just waiting for you to say something, and then almost you had to answer in seniority. So I was off the hook because I was right down the end. In fact, as I recall, we were even seated in seniority. And being just a a humble priest in the parish, (laughs) I wasn't up on the chain of command at all. So it was quite funny, really, but I sat through the whole meal, and I don't think I said a word to anybody. It may be just something quietly to Father Jeff Barron beside me. But it's funny the way we do those things when we're in maybe that sort of social situation 
with someone who was very well known, very same, perceived as powerful, influential, and so on. We're all waiting with bated breath to say, what will they say? And we listen, and it's just sort of part of what we do, because the great person is here, and they will run the show. Well, when it comes to the good Lord, maybe we should afford the Lord the same respect. Maybe there are times when we just should be quiet and listen. This is a story that we get every year on this Sunday, second Sunday in Lent, what we call the transfiguration. Extraordinary occurrence. It was a glimpse for Peter, James and John, just the three of them with Jesus, a glimpse into the divinity of this man alongside whom they had walked and eaten and been with day after day, listened to his words, listened to his teaching, seen some miracles and so on. But this was something quite different. This was a sense of something really beyond this life, something beyond this world, even more so than the miracles, the blind being able to see and the deaf being able to hear. That was amazing enough in itself. But this one, this was totally different. This was no special effects in the movies like we might see these days. This was something which really, in the best sense of the word, blew them away. They knew they were in the presence of the divine. And that's a lot to absorb. Have you ever had that experience? Most of us have probably been on the fringe. We've had a, just some occasion in which God just sort of touches us gently on the shoulder and says, hey, I'm really here. And that beautiful hymn, Be Still and Know That I Am God, is something which maybe characterises that moment when we experience it. And if you've had an experience like that in life, reflect on it. Some time when you just felt, maybe inexplicably, that God was there. It may have been sitting beside someone you love in their last moments. It may have been at the reception of maybe a sacrament for the first time. I know, and maybe thinking of talking about this, I thought back to the day of my confirmation. I was probably about, I think I was about 10 years of age. And in its own way, it was emotional, I guess, but I just found it a very moving experience of confirmation. Maybe all this instruction of the gifts of the Spirit and all of it made a difference in terms of me as a human being, as a little 10-year-old at the time. But there was something which I remember all these years later, just that sense of God's presence in life. And at other times, maybe there's things that have happened and you think back and you think, what was that meant to be? What message is there? Nothing as dramatic necessarily as what we've got here in the Gospel today of the Transfiguration, but still real. Be still and know that I am God. Those times can be there, but in a way we've got to sort of prepare the ground for them. And maybe that's a little more difficult these days when every moment is busy and we don't slow down and we don't listen and we're not silent. A few weeks ago, a parishioner requested that we have a little bit of extra silence in the Mass, in our parish Mass on a Sunday. It's a good suggestion. And we've implemented it into the prayer of the faithful by taking not just three or four seconds, but a good half a minute or so. Half a minute is not a long time. It's the sort of thing we say to people when we're going to be with them soon, say, oh, half a minute, 
Now, maybe half a minute, but when we're quiet, when we all remain silent, half a minute's quite a while. And it's long enough to be able to reach into the depths of our being and take that on board in terms of the presence of God in our life. The interesting thing for Peter, James and John was that this was never repeated. This was a one-off to the best of our knowledge within the context of the scripture. We're not told that it happened again. There were other dramatic events like the veil of the temple being torn in two when Jesus died and so on. But this is sort of a private screening almost, you might say, for Peter, James and John, this sense of that Jesus said, I just want you to have this because not long from now you're going to be tested. You're going to be tempted to run out on me. You're going to be tempted to give up on me. And indeed they were. And while they did drop the ball, so to speak, in terms of their loyalty to Jesus, it wasn't for long. And they came good. And they remembered maybe especially this extraordinary experience. So maybe today on this Feast of the Transfiguration, we can remember and reflect and pray about those times when God in his goodness, in his care and in his love, has just gently tapped us on the shoulder and said to us, hey, I'm here. You might be busy, busy doing this, that and the other, but I'm still here. Don't forget. And maybe especially saying to us, be still and know that I am God. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. And now together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We come confidently asking God to hear the prayers of our heart. We pray for peace in the world. May all Abraham's descendants respect the mutual rights of others to follow the prophet in their own journey to peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose lives are difficult. May they be graced to see the hand of God in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray for all workers in quarantine facilities, that they will stay safe and well as they labor to protect the community at large. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray for all who risk their lives in defense of democracy, that their courageous witness will herald a new era of justice and respect for human rights. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in our parish. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Annie Dempsey, George Simpson, and Kay McNeil. We also pray for Sheila Dillon, Thomas Larive, Benedict Tessera, Albardo Demetrio, the parents of the fleets and Atard families, and Celeste and Philip Luther, and all those whom we hold sacred in our hearts at this time. May they share in the glory of the transfiguration. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. 
as many as I mentioned before, it's our custom now and hopefully an ongoing custom to take this time of sort of extended silence to just reach into the depths of our heart to place before the Lord those intentions which are most important to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these prayers together with those deep within our hearts with confidence in the name of Christ Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. For God we ask to receive us with things of the sacrifice we offer you. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, may this sacrifice cleanse us from our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and in mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, you raise up our minds, and you bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of friendship and peace in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
there's always for those people participating in this mess through YouTube. And I say participating, not just watching, because I know there's people who put it on YouTube and listen, even when they're on the road. So they're part of the, very much part of this as well. And of course, for those listening on 89.9, the light, this little spiritual communion prayer is a wonderful focus on the mystery of the Eucharist in which we share. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And maybe just a little reminder, maybe during this week ahead to look for those opportunities of a time of prayerful silence and peace and then have to be forever. They might even be while you're sitting at the traffic lights waiting for a green arrow or whatever. 
But just turn the radio off while not taking your eye off the green arrow, <laughs> as the person behind you gets annoyed, to just try and find that time of peace and silence to commune with the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. My name is Margaret. I live in the Solomon Islands and this is my story. deaf, life was difficult. I felt isolated until I learned to sign at seven. And finally, I could communicate with my family and friends. As I got older, I wanted to share my knowledge, so I became a teacher at San Isidro Care Center, a vocational school for deaf students. It's the only educational facility of its kind in the Solomon Islands with many of my students having never been to school before. Being born deaf, I understand the challenges that deafness poses to education and employment. We teach 150 teen and adult students sign language and practical life skills that help them earn a living and live with dignity. In 2020, our school faced a triple threat. We struggled with water shortages due to ongoing drought. Then, Tropical Cyclone Harold hit. Damaging our school and vegetable garden. This led to food and water shortages right at that time. We tackled the threat of COVID-19. 
Caritas Australia support helped install eight water tanks and a rain water harvesting system, enabling the school to catch and store drinking water for students and staff throughout the entire year. It also repaired cyclone damaged property and with the fabric characters provided, our students have produced face masks to help protect the local community from COVID. Water is so important to our school. We used to waste precious study time walking off campus twice a day to collect water. Now we have a safe water supply. Students are able to focus on their studies. This water also allows us to boost food security by increasing our vegetable and poultry production to build resilience in the face of future disasters. Our improved water infrastructure and food security allows us to be more and will benefit generations of students to come. Thank you very much, Caritas Australia. Please give generously to Project Compassion today.